This question is a data sufficiency question. It's a geometry question. It's asking us to compute the area of a right triangle. Whenever you get a question of this kind, in reality, what this question is actually testing is it's testing to figure out whether you can find out, whether you can determine that from the data given in the two statements, you're able to find a unique triangle, right? That is what is actually found out, right? If there is more than one triangle that can exist for the given data, then there is a very good chance the area is not going to be the same. In the, any data sufficiency question, we need to get a unique answer, right? Let's look into the question, the statements, and take it forward. A, B, C are sides of a right triangle. What is the area of the triangle is what we need to find out. Two statements that follow this question are statement 1, A is equal to 4, and statement 2, A plus B plus C is equal to 12. The perimeter is equal to 12 is what it says. Right. As with any DS question that we analyze, we'll just quickly take a look at the question stem before diving into the statements and analyzing the statements. We're going to look for two things. We're going to get clarity on when is the data sufficient, and we're also going to look at what information is given, and is there anything that we need to watch out for. Right. We'll start with the first of the questions. The first one is, when is the data sufficient? This question is, what is the area of the triangle? The data is sufficient if I'm able to come up with a unique answer for the area. If I'm able to say that the area of this triangle is 43 square units, and that's the only number that I should say. I cannot have more than one possibility, then the data is sufficient. The crux, the key word here is that we'll have to look for a unique. Unique is a word that we need to watch out for. What do we need to get this answer? Typically, what is the area of a triangle? Area of a triangle, the formula is actually area is equal to half into base into height. So if I'm able to get the base and height of the triangle somehow, I will be able to find out the area of the triangle. So the information needed is possibly base and height of the triangle. What do we need to watch out for? Watch out for these two things. See, from any data that is given, check to see. This is what I've been insisting in the beginning of this thing. Check to see whether more than one triangle is possible, right? For a given data, let's say, if I'm saying the side is equal to so many units, is there only one triangle which is possible with that side or are there more than one triangles possible? If there are more than one triangles possible, there is a good chance that the area for each of these triangles is going to be different, then the data is not going to be sufficient. The second thing that we need to watch out for is the usual tendency when someone asks us for a number, the first thing that comes to our mind is to give an integer. The area, the sides of the triangle need not be integers. For every time we think of a right triangle as 3, 4, 5, there could be a right triangle which possibly is 5 by root 2, 5 by root 2, 5. So that is also a triangle where, which is a right triangle, but sides are not integers. So when you're looking for in this question, don't fall into the trap of looking for only Pythagorean triplets. Pythagorean triplet right triangles are triangles where the sides are integers. There are other right triangles that exist where the sides are not integers, right? So these are the two things that you need to watch out for. Let's dive into statement one. We'll evaluate statement one alone. Statement one says that A is equal to four. One of the three sides A is equal to four. Grossly inadequate, right? The other two sides could be any two numbers. And for each of those things, the value of the triangle could be a completely different one. So with statement one, it's quite easy to eliminate it we will not be able to find the area of the triangle, let alone finding a unique value. So statement one alone is not sufficient. Statement one alone is not sufficient. We quickly eliminate choices A and D. What are we left with? We left with only these three choices, B, C, or E. Let's move on to statement two. Statement two is a little more interesting. It's given us the information that A plus B plus C is equal to 12. We know that this triangle is a right triangle. So the quick temptation is, let's see if there is any Pythagorean triplet that will match it. A 3, 4, 5. 3 plus 4 plus 5 is equal to 12. It's a Pythagorean triplet. We realize that A plus B plus C in this case is equal to 12. So I'm very tempted to say that this is possibly what they are looking at. But hold on. We have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle also. We come up across those kinds of isosceles right triangles. The ratio of the sides in that case is going to be a 1 is to 1 is to root 2. So if I take this part as an x, this as an x, and third side will be x root 2. So 2x plus root 2x could be a 12, and that is going to be a right triangle too. And the area of that triangle is not the same as the area of 3, 4, 5. And do both these triangles have the same perimeter? Yes. 
So knowing the perimeter alone is not sufficient to find this, which is what I've captured in this statement. The sides could be 3, 4, 5, or the sides could be x, x, and x root 2, some of which could be equal to a 12. So with statement 2, we'll have different triangles with different areas. I've just given you two possibilities. There are many more possibilities for the same 12 as a perimeter and the triangle being a right triangle. So you're not able to get a unique area using statement 2. Statement 2 alone is also not sufficient. Once statement 2 is not sufficient, we can quickly eliminate choice B as well. At the end of statement 1, we eliminated AD, we were left with BCE. Now we are eliminating choice B as well. So what we are left with is the remaining two choices, which are C or E. To decide whether it is C or E, let's combine the two statements. Combining the two statements leaves us with this information that one of the sides is equal to 4. The next sum of the sides, the perimeter is equal to 12. What we need to do, having got caught in the second statement, is that whether these two information will lead to only one set of values for the three sides of the triangle. Right. Let's get started. If one of the sides is equal to 4, and we know that it's a right triangle, the perimeter is equal to 12, which means the average of each of these sides is equal to 4. Right. That's what it is. And one of the sides, A, happens to be that 4. So can A be the hypotenuse of this triangle? Certainly not, because hypotenuse is the longest side. And in a right triangle, at least one side, the hypotenuse is going to be different from the remaining two sides, which means that it has to be more than the average. So I can immediately say, A is not my hypotenuse. So A is not my hypotenuse. One of the two sides, B or C, is going to be my hypotenuse. What will be the value of B plus C? If A is equal to 4, B plus C is going to be 12 minus 4. I'm subtracting the value of 4 side A from the perimeter. So B plus C is equal to an 8. So B plus C is 8. I'll quickly write B is equal to 8 minus C. Let's assume that one of we know that one of these two sides is going to be the hypotenuse. We'll take C to be the hypotenuse. So what are the three sides that we have? One side measures 4. One side is 8 minus C, which is side B. And the third side, C, which I have taken it to be the hypotenuse. Let's apply the Pythagorean theorem on this. It essentially states that 4 square plus 8 minus C, the whole square, is equal to C square. Let's solve for C. Expand these terms. What we have is 16 plus 8 square is a 64. A square plus B square will be a C square minus 2AB, which is actually going to be equal to 16C, is equal to C square. Cancel the c square with a c square. Take 16c to the right hand side or keep 16c on one side and the constant terms to the other side. 16c is equal to 80 or c is equal to 5. So we found a value for c. We know a is equal to 4 which essentially means that b should be equal to 3. So we have a unique value for the three sides of the triangle. If the sides of the triangle are 3, 4, 5 then its area is going to be half into 3 into 4, which is area is half into base into height. We've got a unique value for the area of the triangle combining the two statements. Right? What we need to satisfy ourselves with when we combine the two statements is, are we getting a unique value for the three sides? We did get by combining the two statements. So statements 1 and 2 together are sufficient. Choice C is the answer.